Hello everyone, my name is Nicole and I'm here at Let's Make Art. And we are combining <laughs> lettering with illustrations for watercolors. I'm a lettering artist and we thought it'd be fun to bring them together. And so this is your bonus project for the month. We are doing these beautiful ornaments. Ooh, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see that there's lettering and if that freaks you out and you want to either trace it, you can do that and you can start with that or I will guide you through different steps to help you make it your own. Great. Um, the four oh. steps that we're going to use for this painting. Step one, we're going to do leaves here. Step two, we're going to do the stripes on our ornaments. Step three is where Nicole is going to kind of guide us through the lettering. And I went ahead, because I, I consider myself more of a beginner with lettering, so I went ahead and traced it. You'll see that hers here is empty, and so she'll freehand that for you. So you can just choose whatever makes you feel more comfortable. And then step four, we're going to do the details. So just the little red dots, just little tops of the ornaments, just those finishing elements that just make it nice. Details. Details, details. Okay, but we have a brush that we're using, just one. It's a round two, and we're going to use this for both the watercolor and the lettering. And the four colors are red rose, is it red rose or rose mm -hmm. red? It's a great song regardless. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> I made up that name and I can't remember which one's worse. Uh, Tahoe blue, black, and leaf green. So just four colors. We ready to go? Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to take my round two. I'm going to get it wet and then I kind of hit it off the side because I don't want things dripping all over. And I'm going to grab some green and just add some water to it to kind of smooth it out. And then you're just going to start filling in your leaves that we have outlined here. Now, a fun thing that I like to do, so let's say I'm just filling this in. And then while it's still wet, I'm just going to fill my brush with green and kind of just drop that in it. And it's just going to naturally kind of bleed out. And you're going to get some color variation that way, some texture variation, just something to make it add a little bit more interest. So just go ahead and drop it in. And if you want some of your leaves to have more of a blue hint to it, then I'm, you can mix in, because on some of them, it's almost like a turquoisey color on some of the leaves. So just mix in a little bit of that Tahoe blue, and you can do some of your leaves with that color. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah. And even like, let's say if I do one of these leaves over here, and while it's still wet, maybe I drop in a little bit of blue there. You're a wild woman. <laughs> I like to live on the edge, <laughs> so I like to <laughs> drop in color. <laughs> yes, so I said it. So planned, Alex. You know what? It's not planned. I, I don't know until I'm like, do you know what? This is the perfect, perfect. opportunity to say I live on the edge when I drop in color. Nicole, this is your first time with liquid watercolors, yes? Yes, it is. And I love it. They're pretty fun. And they're very vibrant colors. That's why I like them. The color, it's just so beautiful. It just pops off the page. You're you born in the wrong era, sir. <laughs> what era do I belong in? The 20s. The 20s? <laughs> the color. The color. The color is the best part. You need a long cigarette and a puppy. <laughs> a puppy. Oh, you have one. I do have one. He's not a puppy, but he's a small dog. His name's Harvey Danger, if you're wondering. Danger? Yeah, Danger is his last name. And when he was a tiny little puppy and we named him Harvey Danger, we gave him a spiked collar. <laughs> it wasn't like totally, don't worry people, it wasn't super sharp. You know, they do like spiked collars for pets that are like, they're like toy spikes, so it won't hurt them. Literally nobody was <laughs> no, listen, people love animals. They care about them. So do I, obviously. <laughs> so just keep on keeping on, filling in. And you see, like, for me, I dropped in some blue on these leaves over here. And for me, I love that, inter that like, introducing another color in there, where these are kind of just more of the single color. And I like kind of having a mixture of both. I just think it makes 
the painting more fun and and you can choose if you actually have a we're not using yellow for this project but yellow is another great color that you can drop into green when you're doing leaves so if you have that at home whip it out if you want great okay i'm going to move on to the leaves on the other side we're still on step one you guys are doing great And remember, if you want these stems to be nice and thin, you want to make sure that you're really, really light pressure with your round two. Just like, that's how you get those nice thin lines. When you're pushing hard, that's where you get the thick lines. And if you have too much water and paint on your brush, like if your round two is totally filled with paint and water, and when you try and do a thin line, it still might come out as a little thick because it's just so full. So sometimes I like pick up, if I'm trying to do a really thin line, I'll pick up some paint and then I just like brush it back and forth on my palette and get rid of the excess. We can't see that up there. Oh, sorry. So I kind of pick up some paint and if I want to do a thin line, I'll like brush this back and forth to get off the excess. And now I have like a nice point at the top of my two. And now I can do like a nice thin line. Ooh, look at that thin line. I'm going to do these ones more green. And remember, this is your this is your painting that you're making. So if you want to do leaves in other areas that I don't have outlined, feel free to do so. Give yourself permission to change it if you want to. That, you could kind of trace certain elements yeah. that you didn't feel comfortable with. Totally. Like maybe you're like, I'm just not interested in leaves. Well, don't trace the leaves and do something else. What could they do there? Stripes? I don't know. Nothing. Leave Listen, you're the creative one. <laughs> maybe it's just an even wash. Yeah, and a Christmas tree. trace it as hard as you did? It seems like pretty, pretty thick pencil lines. What? There's a lot of pencil lines. <laughs> it's called a setup, Sarah. Sorry, I didn't hear it and then I ruined it. I'm sorry, Al. I'm sorry. It's been a while since we've done this together. Oh, you guys, Al's back. Everybody say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> He's helping us out today. Nicole, how are you doing? Good. You're doing great. Those are looking excellent. It's fun. You know what? It is fun. We party, you know? Paint party every week. Be there. How do you like Hamilton, Nicole? It's very quaint. Oh, that's a good word. Quaint. That was the first word that came to my mind. <laughs> Everyone's so nice and friendly. And the weather is gorgeous. Oh, it's been beautiful here. I'm so glad. Oh, and the red leaves. Oh yeah. As <laughs> when we walked, <laughs> when we walked to like that middle part of town where it's those row of big red trees, she she like squealed. She I just, just stopped like, and ah, look at that. <laughs> it's like four trees in a row that are all fully red. That does not exist in California. Okay. Oh, there's bottom leaves. Yeah, you got bottom, but bottom. it's okay. You sometimes miss and you can always go back. Okay. Um, oh, uh, that was an example of too much water. If so there's just, too much water, yeah. So what around. she can do also is you can just take your paper towel and lift up the color and that paper towel just soaks up the extra water. Ooh, fun. That kind of looks cool too. Yeah. I might just leave that. I would like to say that when I came in here, out here and visited every week, they would be like, oh, it was like in the 60s and 70s. And then seriously, the day I flew in, it was like snow, snow ice day. every single time. And he's like, I swear it was warm yesterday. <laughs> I'm like, I don't believe you. <laughs> and I'm from California. I don't have a coat. I brought like a sweater. People will be like, Where are you? where's your coat? I'm like, I don't yeah, own I don't one. <laughs> <laughs> the coldest it gets is like 60. Okay, warm here. So that was step one, you guys. We did our leaves. 
You nailed it. Great job. Just great job. Oh, yeah. Let's just give ourselves, let's just take a step. Good job. How pretty. <laughs> it's not going to catch on, Sarah. It's, I tried. Nobody else clapped. It's okay. Let's move on. We're going to do the stripes now. Now, you'll notice on the ornaments, the stripes that we did on um, the ornaments themselves, they don't go straight across. I didn't notice that. Did you? Yeah. Great. So the reason why they don't go straight across is because the ornaments themselves are a sphere. They're, they have form, there's a dimension. So if we want it to seem three-dimensional, then we have to, um, like how we would see it actually in person on a form, is it would actually come around because it comes out around in the front. So we're kind of mimicking that form shape by putting a curve in our line. Now, if these were to go straight across, it would just kind of make our ornaments look more two-dimensional than three-dimensional. So that's why there's that curve. So whenever you're trying to come across that you're painting on a form, you gotta make sure that you would follow that line as if it was actually in person. An example is those, if, if it didn't, it would look like those flat ornaments mm -hmm. that we have that are like that thin. Yeah, like just like two-dimensional, yeah, totally instead flat, ball. instead of that sphere shape that we're going for that ball shape. So I'm going to grab some Tahoe blue because I, I want this color to be like a, a light, like mint almost. So mm. I'm grabbing, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to grab Is some that blue. Is your favorite color? A light mint. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, what is your favorite color? Orange. Really? Great, great color. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of blue and I'm gonna mix some green and then I'm gonna add water to it to lighten it up. Pretty. So it's just this really soft, light color. Now, when I did my outline for this, I traced it pretty hard. Um, and I say this during the lives all the time, so hopefully you're more familiar because I'm saying this kind of late, but trace it light, really light pressure when you're tracing because these pencil marks do show up through the paint because watercolor is transparent. So I'm just gonna start using this really pretty light blue color and just start filling in these stripes. Now, if you are trying to make your ornament seem even more dimensional, a trick that you can use is you just make the edges of these lines a little bit darker. Like if you've done our bumblebee, it's simple to how we it's similar to how we did the body, where those stripes are darker on the edge and then they get lighter in the middle. And that's just how that light is hitting off that form. So it kind of pushes the sides back when you add it darker. And it pushes the front forward when you give it that highlight. But if you're not really interested in making this look seem totally three-dimensional, you don't have to do that. You can just do an even wash. Mm, this color is so pretty. Yeah. Yes. That's right. <laughs> That's right, it is. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful <Yes>. colors. <laughs> uh. And of course, we always say this, it's your painting, it's your life. Maybe you like the blue color by itself. Do your stripes in blue. You know? I'm going to see somebody do this all in reds. They might, or just red and green, or maybe someone who just loves you will do it in orange. That's very kind. <laughs> They'll be like, I'll swear our color is orange, I'm gonna do it all in orange. Okay, I'm moving on to my other side, the one on the left. And um, you can do the, like, you know how we dropped in the drop of color on the leaves? Y say, yes, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, you can do the same thing. <laughs> I'm so in the zone right now. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so let's say you're doing these stripes, right? And you want just a little bit of interest, but you don't want to make it totally dimensional. You can drop in things of color or you can drop in just droplets of water. Ooh. And then that itself is going to create kind of an unevenness, some different textures and just some interest. So after, so like right now or after? So while it's still wet, like right mm -hmm. here, you're just going to... Mm. Drop it in, just 
fun. And then you see how that yeah. color is automatically spreading out from where that water was dropped in. It just gives it, I think, just more visual interest. So feel free to try that. Yeah, that's cool. It's like the salt over there. Yeah, it's similar to salt where it just pushes that color to the edge. And that's step two. That's, that's so easy. We're halfway Woo! done with this painting. You guys are doing great. Now we're gonna move on to step three, which is lettering. Oh, okay. Let's do this. With lettering. So we are gonna start with this guy. Actually, because it's a little wet. Maybe we'll start with the string. Okay. So you're gonna let that dry. So as you guys can see, what we have is what we actually did was the string is lettering. And so this is all done with the same two zero or two brush. And what we're gonna focus on are two different things. I want you to think about the angle and I want you to think about how thin these lines are. We're gonna create that with just using the tip of the brush and very lightly, lightly pressing. So I want you guys to practice first with scratch paper and either pen or pencil, whatever you feel comfortable with. With this, what we're emulating is the string. So it's just a straight line. So you can draw that for yourself first. And along that line, you're not following this line exactly. Like you're not drawing on top of it. What we're actually gonna do is draw on it. And so this is the middle. Okay. And so with that, what you can do is actually, so we're gonna start with what we did was we did, we did a saying, so it's be Mary. So we're gonna start with B first. And with this, I want you to try and draw B and then draw it cursive, but then draw it with at an angle. If you tend to naturally write a little bit more straight up, it might be like that, which is there's nothing wrong with that and that's totally a personal preference style. But what we're trying to do is make our string look very thin and very angled. So instead of being a super big block, what we're trying to do is stretch it out and have it create more of this look of a string, which we're totally making up. So, do you want to try that? Yeah. Draw it a little bit more at an angle and a little bit skinnier. Is that too angled? No, that's perfect. So you can totally play with it. That's a great question. There's nothing wrong with maybe it's just slightly angled or you can play with it being really angled. I want you guys to have fun and experiment with that. That is beautiful. So then, like she did, she's connecting the other one. If you didn't have a loop in your B, maybe add that. So draw your line and then maybe curve it up like that. And then the extension of your E is just gonna be the end of your, your line. So then we'll keep going and practice all of them. So that's perfect, yes, and it's fun because you can experiment with how you enter and where you exit. But the one thing I wanna focus on is the angle. So okay. then let's practice with bring. So you can do the same thing again, draw your own little line. So another way that you can experiment with this is you can draw yourself a rectangle, let's say, that's actually a pretty long one. Let's say you want to write bring and you're trying to challenge yourself to do it just in this grid. So this is just your practice. What you can do is I will not go higher or lower this, than this line except for the G because it goes all the way down. So I'm going to draw within this. I'm going to try and make it angled again. And if it helps you, you can draw little lines for yourself. Oh, that's a good idea. That help you. So again, I don't want you to follow that like it's a ruler, but it's more of a pair or lines that you want to be parallel with. So then draw or write out bring. And again, like I said, let's stay within these lines, except this G will go through. So that's kind of helpful to see that. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, because I think by seeing that angle, like the visual angle of it, it's like, it's, it's a good reminder of like, oh, then my B angle starts that way. And then right. my R. So Instead of being like that. Yeah. Oh, that's super helpful. Yeah. And again, it doesn't need to be exactly perfect. So you don't have to pretend like you're drawing this line. Um, and then 
So that's that one, and then we'll do the same thing. Just pretend like you draw your line or your curve, and then this will just extend all the way over there. Okay, so then for the last one, what this one I want you guys to experiment with is you can play with the spacing. So if you draw your word usually, and it is straight up and down, so we practice with it being more at an angle, so that was that step. So what I now want you guys to experiment with is how stretched out can you make it? Because maybe we over exaggerate it just for practice on this one. And we're going to start with this letter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to really give a lot of room in between. So what I'm doing is I'm just extending this um, stroke in between just to add a little bit more space. So it's this is different than cursive where if you saw my hand, if I were to do this all in one stroke, my hand gets really cramped up. So mm -hmm. what I want you guys to do is feel free to release your hand, even if you're mid letter and then let go. That way I could really extend and then keep going. So try and experiment with that, just adding more spacing. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Yeah. Fun. Okay. Did all that and make it, sense? Yeah, and it's so much easier if I actually take a break in between the letters or that kind of thing because I think when we see like cursive like that, we think we have to do it like we did cursive in school, which is never lifting up right. your pencil, which for me is a little bit harder. And so I like that I can like stop. And then you can also like kind of adjust where your lines come in at the letters almost. But Right. And if you want, you can even ex play with, especially with this P, maybe instead you curve it instead of. So once oh, you do okay. it once, you can kind of experiment with what yeah. you have. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. I think especially when you write it once, you just write naturally how you probably would write cursive yeah. or not. Um, so it kind of helps to see what you're working with. So now that we practice that, you guys can experiment a little bit more. What we're going to do is Sarah did always already write hers. Yes. Um, but I'm going to show and I'll just draw in and I'll do exactly what I just did earlier. Um, with this, because I have different spacing, so you can experiment. So if you want to do again, you put this here so they can oh see. Oh yeah, it. perfect. If you want to draw your own line, you can do that again really lightly. I'm just lightly drawing my line. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I show you guys where I'm gonna draw over it. And again, I'm very angled. And then I just extend that line to go here. And I'm start in the entrance of my string and then curve up. Oh great. So there's B and then bring. So you can decide if you want it to extend for the whole way. I'm probably just going to do it in the middle. So I'm going to start about here and again. Oh, I'm going to draw my line to help me. So I know, so I'm not drawing all the way up here. And then I'm start about here. So bring, because we're saying bring joy to the world. So I'm just going to really extend and I'm angling, I'm trying to really squeeze my letters together as far as the angle. And then maybe that goes like that. And then I'll draw the entrance curve right there. So there's bring and then piece one more. P, so again, maybe I'll curve this and I'll make a loop here. P, E, A. So again, I had to lift up my hand to release it so then I don't get cramped up. Peace. And then the entrance there. So there is I my... I totally misspelled a word. In <laughs> oh, for sure. We were looking at letters so many times. I always have to say, is that really how you spell Brammy Brink? Yeah. <laughs> yes. To answer your question. Um, okay. So now that you have your guidelines, what we're going to do is maybe let's do a little warm up on your scratch paper first just to get comfortable. I, and I think the great thing when, when I thought of lettering, I thought like that's so scary because it's freehand and you're like doing this, but it seems like a lot of the times you actually sketch it, like really softly put it out first, which is such a comforting thing for me because right. I'm just like, oh no, I, I just, I just do it till I like it and then I can like paint it. Yeah. And I think another common misconception is if you have bad, bad handwriting, that's just the way that you write. Yeah. And so as you guys saw, we were playing with the angle and spreading it out and you're artfully and mindfully crafting it rather than mindlessly 
This yeah. is just how I write. So hopefully you guys are able to see that within this lesson. Do you want your scratch paper to be watercolor if you're gonna do painting or? Fair, either yeah. way. Yeah, let me get you one. Okay. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> also, I just wanna say I tried tracing this and then my outline moved. So that's why my <laughs> thing looks all like wonky. An, it's like an Easter egg. That's why you wanna tape that sucker down. Okay. So what, we're gonna use this guy, right? Yeah. Okay. So pick up your color. How wet do I get my brush? Is it similar to painting where it's just like just enough to get it moist? Yes, because okay. you don't want that bubble that we saw where you have too much water. Okay. And I loved your tip of kind of getting the excess off if you feel like you have too much. Okay. So with this, when you have such a rounded tip, what I want you to experiment with is how lightly you're pressing. So I'm just gonna very lightly graze the paper like we were doing with the, the um, what, what was it, the fox yeah. mouth. Yeah. So you're practicing with a light, really light line because if you push too hard, it will create a thicker line, which isn't wrong. I just wanna show how, if we wanna emulate such a really thin string, we really wanna try and emphasize the thinness of it. So you're just lightly grazing. And then the other thing that you can experiment with, which is a little bit different with lettering, is you can experiment with how you hold the sky. Oh, okay. So if, I want you to start with however, you, let's naturally try it how you okay. would naturally paint. But one thing is we're gonna stay a little bit more grounded rather than being a little bit more levitated and maybe drawing like this. Cause you wanna feel like you have a lot of support. So maybe you ground your hand. Okay. And then if we're gonna draw a piece, for example, maybe you draw a line in a curve. However you feel like you have a little bit more control. And then the other thing is, especially when we have curved letters, like on the, let's practice this, on the G. J or the G, yeah. On the bottom. <laughs> we're gonna do a J, but it's a, it's because we're gonna do a G. Oh oh oh, I see. Sorry. No, but it totally is a J. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally good. Um, what might happen is if your brush flips and doesn't really do what you want it to do, like that. Ugh. It gross. can get very annoying <laughs> and gross. As well. So if I'm so like here and then here's where it kind of flips like mm -hmm. that's why we have that thickness difference yes. right is that what you're and what did you also notice that you're pushing against the brush so it goes like that yeah what i want you to do is really try and focus on the tip so you're just going to lightly graze so i'm kind of stay on the tip the entire time oh so i'm kind of coming more straight on it as opposed to the angle yes and that's okay. another thing you can experiment with so try and like oh so <laughs> i i hit my hand oh how did no that feel? flipping. I'm really excited about that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what she did was we experiment. You can experiment with yes, how you the angle that you come at the letter. So instead of being angled, she was a little bit more on top of it, and then really focusing on the amount of pressure that you're giving. Oh. Woo. Nicole, will you show us one more time? Yes. I'll get on this close up here. Okay. So I'm gonna do this J. So I'll do what might be happening to you guys is if you push, if you're pushing a little bit too hard and it either goes like that and you kind of smudge the brush or push it, smush, smudge, smush, 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 <laughs> smush. or you might be saying, okay, I'm going to lightly press, but then it does that and it flips wonky, which isn't a bad thing, but sometimes it might flip like you don't want it to and do that mm -hmm. and you can't control it and you're like, ah, oh, shoot. What I want you to try to do is A, you can try and come on top of the letter so you're really using the tip and then really focus on just lightly grazing instead of pushing. So I'm gonna lightly graze the paper and I'm on the tip this entire time even when I'm doing that entire stroke. Wow. And so you can oh, see how so lightly, I, lightly I was pressing. And that's okay that there's a very, a, this is really thin and this is thick. Doesn't have to be perfect, I think that's beautiful. So let's do it. Oh, I'm so excited to yes. do this. Ah. And what's great is that because we are doing it in a gray, you don't have to erase anything or you can just totally go for it. So again, try and really focus. It's such a mindful thing of, you wanna make sure you breathe. Because <laughs> sometimes you might pause to breathe. So allow yourself to breathe, but also really focus on the thin. I'm gonna rip this off so my 
edge doesn't get in my way. If you have too much water like this and you start to really draw mindfully, it'll just come out like that, even if I'm lightly grazing. Mm -hmm. So I, I love Sarah's tip of getting a little bit excess off in painting if you have too much. Okay, let's do this. Let's do it. Oh, another thing that you can experiment with is, as you can see, Sarah and I naturally angled our paper. You can play with that, because if it's too hard to write really perfect straight on, that typically is a little bit um, restricting, so you can totally allow yourself to angle. That looks great. I've noticed, yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry, I was thinking of something else. Thank you, I really appreciate this. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so many thoughts going through. Okay, but tell for, me. For me, it's easier to do thinner lines going across Oh. Which is why I like to angle my paper like like totally this way, like totally. But like for me, I, f I don't know if that would be as easy, but I, it's just preference is totally. what I'm saying. Yeah. It's just like whatever feels comfortable to you. It's easier for me to do thin lines when I go across than if like going up and down. Yeah, everyone's very different. And if you're left-handed, mm. that is another thing. You totally can do this too. And what I want you to experiment with is that might really help the angle of your paper really experimenting because some people are underwriters and some people are overwriters. So you can experiment with what works for you. I've seen some people that are literally perpendicular and drawing like this, or maybe it's this way. Are they mad? Either way, nothing's right or wrong. We want you to do it. We want you to just try. Okay, so I like to be a little bit angled. So again, I am just really lightly grazing even when I'm on this loop. And it's okay that even I skip that a little bit. If you want, you can just lightly go back over it. Doesn't matter. Yours is so much darker. Is that just because obviously you probably oh, just have I a little bit more much. paint in your... Yep, that was not intentional. But no, I'm That's saying I like it. Works. I'm saying I like it. It's good, it's good. I meant to be a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fun. So that just meant I just used black and I didn't have enough water. So I'm gonna mix it up. Oh. Oh yeah, this color is just so vibrant. I love it. Okay. Okay, I have to like connect. And also, I should also say, again, like the saying is you can totally lift up, like I was saying earlier, and don't feel like you have to do it on one stroke. So for example, I see this all as one stroke that we were doing. I'm gonna do this whole thing in one and then stop there and then lift up. So even though that's only half of a B, I'm seeing this as stroke by stroke rather than B, R, I, N, G. So we want you guys to think about that of breaking it up. So again, this is one stroke. And then I'm gonna lift up. Maybe I do this. So again, just really lightly, I'm only using the tip. And did you finish? Well, I finished my my G, and I got a little bit thick on it, but um, I'm not mad about it. That's totally okay. <laughs> I'm okay with it. It's not a big deal. And just a reminder, like, Nicole does this for a living. So at first, I was like, oh my gosh, her strokes are so thin and so great. And so, and I was getting down on myself, but then I'm like, no, this is like me trying this for the first time. So <laughs> we're doing great. And you, Matt, you, the fact that you had that aha moment of the um the thinness yes like the that angle of being on top it yes. is huge because like yeah that's like the tiniest thing that as you keep going and you practice with us weekly yes you will be able to figure this out and even like even though i'm following along with the outline it's still a little bit different but that's okay too yes And then another tip is as your, if, if this, I like this variance actually, because I think with watercolors, it's beautiful because you don't have to have all just one straight color. Mm -hmm. A tip that you can use is if you have to stop mid stroke, mm -hmm. instead of starting literally right up where you stopped, mm -hmm. overlap a little bit and then keep going. So, so it's way, just like a smoother... Yeah, okay. it's less of a harsh transition that I can see, that you can, that I can see. Oh, it looks like a little wave. It does. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, good job. Yay.
Hey! I love my strings. So fun. I wish showing really what did look like that. We could we could have been more creative and made this have its own phrase so it made sense this way and um. this way. Listen, you guys can do that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more thoughtful. We, well, we, that was very clever. I think we We missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's go to Mary. Okay. So what you can experiment with is the same thing. We decided to write Mary. You can write whatever you want. Maybe it's a name or whatever you like to do. Oh, name. That's a cute idea. If you want to, again, experiment just to figure it out. This time, if it helps you, you can also draw on that straight line. Actually, don't do that because we're drawing on oh, a curve. Yeah, because this ball is curved, we're, we're slightly curving this, but not much. And instead of if that is a little bit too much to think about, just think about filling this space up. So what I'm trying to think, it might actually be easier if you practice on the shape rather than oh, if okay. you want to practice your word first or figure out what you're doing. But what I want to show you is with this whole space. So what we see is we have this Y. Mm -hmm. So instead of what I what we might want to avoid is if you draw your word and your Y, it's too low. Okay. So because we know that, what you can play with is bringing the Y up a little bit higher. Oh, okay, so the top of my Y started over here as yeah. opposed to like down here. Instead of seeing if you draw mm -hmm. a straight line. So the beautiful part about this is that there is no straight line. I would rather you guys experiment. Maybe something's really high. So maybe your M is really high and then your E is a little bit lower but then your I or your Y maybe comes up really high just so you can extend it mm. a little more. So it doesn't have to follow a straight line this way, a straight line this way. Okay. I want you guys to experiment and make it your own. I'm gonna draw within this line. And then also what you can play with is if you wanna keep going with the angles that we were doing, instead of drawing my M like that, straight up and down, maybe I try and force myself to do it at an angle so it looks like that instead. Mm. Okay. I'll just keep drawing. So again, I'm just gonna make my Y a little bit higher so then I can add my curve to the bottom. Great. So Mary, okay. And then for this one, I wanted to show that if you wanted to make it all maybe a little bit thicker since we're not dealing with string, mm -hmm. you can play with, oops, I'm gonna show this guy. You can play with, okay, maybe you're focusing and want to make it a little bit thicker. And so what's happening is I'm just pressing a little bit harder. Oh, okay. So it doesn't all have to be thin and it doesn't all have to be thick. So you can okay. experiment with that. So strong. Area. I'm ready to go. Let's I'm do doing it. my red. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm going crazy. And again, I would take it stroke by stroke rather than doing M-E-R-R-Y. So this is its own stroke and then I lift up. How do you know when to lift up? It's when you have a hard stop, so. Oh, okay, okay. That's a great question. So if you are writing the word Mary, that's one stroke, one, two, maybe three. Oh. If you do your E's like that, you might also do your E like that and then start over. Okay. So basically just when it feels like a natural stop or maybe like an angle or something. Yeah, when you're not transitioning into, like, this is going up and then I transition to go this way. You have to listen to your heart, you know? You got to listen to your heart and see what's right for you. <laughs> Life lesson from Let's Make Art. I love it. There we go, yay! Yeah! Oh, and yours is fun because it has a little bit of thin and a little bit of thick. Yeah, my, my thing flipped a little on the bottom, so I just thickened it right there and Which fixed my little flippy. Totally works. Totally fine. That's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Okay. Maybe one day it won't anymore. Last thing is your quote. So this is the big guy, so that's why we warmed up to get to this. With this guy, like we did in our November box, we were playing with thumbnail sketches and kind of experimenting what you want to do. Do you want to do the circle? Yeah. Like to trace it if? You can totally do that. 
our handy dandy duct tape or yep. glue tape. So with this, you can experiment with how you want. If you have your quote, actually I'm gonna do it quick with just drawing little thumbnail sketches. So what that means is I'm just gonna figure out, okay, how do I want to write this word? Is it all stacked? Is joy to the world maybe just two lines? What kind of fits with what you're working with? So because we have a, a larger square, or sorry, a circle, that's not definitely not square. <laughs> it's okay, we, we're not good at shapes on oh, this show. Oh <laughs> man, that's a circle. <laughs> Okay, a circle, I have a lot more room on both sides. So it's not like I'm fitting into, a, what else should I say? Not fitting into a rectangle. Okay. So you can experiment with height and then you experiment with adding some block letters or some cursive letters. So you can say maybe joy to the world. So these are just really quick, not perfect. Love it, figuring out what works. Um, then once you do that, I noticed that I have this really fun Y and these are such small letters. So what I thought is that what if I experiment, which is what we did on our final guy, which I'll show you is, yeah. So as you can see here, I saw that this Y was really big and I thought how cool if we just add these two words that are really small in there. So that is what we're gonna experiment with is, cause what happens is if you draw the word once your quote once and you kind of dissect what you're working with so that's why there's no rule as far as well i don't know if what if it's supposed to look like this i want you to take in what you do and draw that first and then use what you have being smart use what you have so i have this huge loop another life lesson another life lesson brought and to you by let's make art <laughs> you can choose maybe you want to do that in cursive too but i thought it kind of be cool to mix it up so joy to the and then i have this whole space and how perfect because we have an l and a d and we have all this space right here oh that worked out so it fills it very well so l d and then i also noticed when I did this, I had some room at the bottom, so you can choose to either leave that blank, or I thought... Hold that, hold that up a little more. Oh, sorry. There you go. So I saw that I had this blank space here, so I chose to just, what if we just add this little curly Q guy? I love it. Fill it in, because you can either leave it like that or go like that. Yeah, and it, it kind of mimics that, the roundness of the bottom of the ornament. Totally. Which I think fills it up nicely. Which actually is a good point, really quickly, I'm just going to show. If we made it like that, that probably wouldn't go well. So, it, like she said, it mimics. Yeah, I, I can't even look at that. <laughs> <laughs> little, little things. Okay. So, you already have that written. I'm going to draw it on here really quickly. I used the outline, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Although it's kind of funny because like, I do have it written, but like just watching you experiment, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to play. Right? Because that's just how you, that's how I see it. It's just like playing around with how I kind of want to mix it up. And that's the fun part is you're crafting your own letters. Yeah. Okay. Let's go for it. Oh, and then the fun thing that you can experiment with is, do you want to do a little ombre effect or a gradient? So what we did was we can do a light color and then a little darker. A little darker. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun. Go crazy. Maybe use orange. Maybe live life on the edge. <laughs> oh, oh, that would have been my moment. <laughs> Where you at, Nicole? Damn it. <laughs> Nicole, that was for oh. you. So I like the gradient from going from a lighter color to a dark. So I'm actually going to stay with like the stripy color to begin with and then darken it up as I go. And you might be like, well, how do I darken it up? Well, just make sure that your paint ratio, you have more paint than water on your brush. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. I'm going for it. Let's do it. Okay. But I'm, I'm, ang See I'm you on the other side, Sarah. Here we go. <laughs> <gasps> Remember to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. So again, you can play with, if you want to make it thinner or thick and play with the angle of your hand. And this is where you might have that swoop. So go really slow. That's another thing I want you guys to try, is try going slow, because I think natural tendency is to do it really fast. I want you to try and do it really slow. That's actually a little bit too thin. So even if you do that, you can totally go over it a little bit more. And also, I don't really care if you do that and then do this the other direction. I don't really care. I will never know. <laughs> Look me in the eyes, I don't care. <laughs> Look, let me tell you what, don't care. Because we already have our outline, so we're good. 
How are you doing, Sarah? I'm, I'm focusing. Oh, I had to stop. I had to stop in the middle of a stroke, but it's okay. So again, I'm gonna do this U and then I'm gonna stop and then I'm gonna pick it up because that's such a big stroke. So I that's what sure. I tried to do and I ran out of steam right there. Oh, which is okay. So I'm gonna start at the top maybe. Yeah, and then do it all over. So, are you on the same stroke? Oh, oh, stay on the tip. Oh yeah, I Woo! nailed that, I <laughs> nailed that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So if your slips, it's okay. Go back over it. Like what happened on Sarah's Y. Other, other Y. Right? You saw that happen there. I'm like, I thought I nailed my Y. But I, no, I actually whatever. feel like I did flip a little bit. So I'm thickening up down here a little bit. Feel free to make the... See how I'm, I'm like going back and I'm, and I'm fixing some stuff where I want to thicken it up a little bit more. You guys can do that. It's not like one stroke and done, you know? Nope. Nicole didn't need to. I needed to a little bit. Well, I can still do it if I want There's to. There's nothing wrong. Okay, so, then so a now bit darker. I'm going to add a little bit more paint to my mixture, get it that darker color. Okay, so for this, because it's so small, I really, really want you to focus on the thin because if you push too hard, because these letters are so small. So really lightly graze and just draw little lines instead of pushing too hard. That was me moving on the chair. I didn't too. <laughs> it's fine. Nice. Okay. Okay. Ooh, that's a good color. I love that mint. Okay. Yeah, this go joy a is a good. Darker. darker for the world. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm just making. I'm just making sure there's more paint on my brush than water. That's how you get that darker value. Okay, so start with just doing a U. And then do the other half of the W. And then stop. And then when you do the O, it's a very, it's a, it's a lot longer of a stroke. So I'm gonna really make sure I'm on top of the letter and just lightly grazing. And if that's too thin, see how that's a lot thicker and that's a lot thinner, you can totally leave that. Or if you want to go back over it, maybe you just add a little bit more. Yeah, because I had to thicken this one up because my line got a little bit crooked. Mm, that's a good way to fix it. Oh, too, is that why you fix it? <laughs> yep. So I'm just going to thicken some of these other lines so it like doesn't totally stand out. So because my L is such a big stroke, I'm gonna stop there. And then like I said, instead of starting right here, I'm gonna overlap a little bit and then get going on this really big guy. And then maybe I'll stop there and then get a little bit more and again overlap. So let's see, this is a little thin, so maybe you can thicken that up. And then, so if this motion is awkward for you guys because you already have a line, maybe you just do right to left. Did that, how did that feel? Uh, my paintbrush flipped on me a little bit. Mm, so on that curve? On that curve. Because yeah, I just, I just have a harder time staying on top of it. I'm so used to like using the side of my brush, maybe from painting. Yeah. And so um, I just thickened the whole line, which totally works. I feel good about it. Look at that. Yeah. How fun. Okay. That's all with the lettering. You guys, that was step three, and that was probably the hardest step. So you guys nailed it. Good job. Woo. 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 And breathe. Woo. Woo. Breathe. Relax. Okay. Now we just get to do the fun little details. So you'll notice in our example here, we kind of have like these little berries around the leaves over here. I didn't put those in the outline because I want you to just kind of choose where you want those to go. We have some red dots and then I'm just going to use um, black, but add water to it to make it gray and then fill in that top. So well, let's do it. I'm just doing little dots 
And they don't have to be perfect. They're not perfectly circle. Some of them are a little bit smaller and bigger than other. Just like people. Just like people. We all come in different shapes and sizes. My dot might be a little taller. <laughs> Your what? My dot. Your dot might be a little taller. That's right. For some of us, <laughs> For some of us my dot is going to be a little squatty. And maybe you want to make your red dots like really big, like big old cranberries or something. Do it. It's your life. It's now or never. Okay. Okay. I feel good about that. Maybe I'll do a little one up here. Maybe one down here. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then around the leaves. And don't feel like you have to like, um, I want to do dots over here, but I might not be able to fit three. So I'm just going to do like one and then like half of one. And then that stripe kind of cuts it off. Ooh. That's okay. They don't have to all be I love that. perfectly add that over here. in there. So really just willy-nilly, yes? It's willy-nilly dots. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can do it on, because we do have a little bit of white spaces around this ornament, if you guys wanted to do red dots or like a little extra leaves or something, like feel free to fill in that space if you want. Is it okay if I go off the example and add leaves to mine? Yeah. Okay, I'm doing it. Mm. And then the circle around the joy of the world, that, that ball shape is just pencil right now. Do we paint that? We do paint that. Oh, it's part of the detail? It is part of the detail. Don't worry, Al. We'll get there. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I'm so smart. So I'm just going to put in a little bit. A leaves around some of this maybe. You could also, I'm gonna experiment and play with leaves on. Ooh, on the curve line? Yeah. Yes. Let's see what that does. Okay, I'll probably do one down here. But this is just, this is where you can take the time and just play. Make it yours. And let's say you do this and you're like, oh no, I messed up the spacing. Do another one. You can do it. It's not a big deal. It's just paint and paper. And also the fun thing about adding decoration to these little ornaments. What do you call them? Ornamentation? No? Uh, That's not a word? <laughs> details. Whatever Let's call you them call details. details. <laughs> <laughs> it can help you fill space if you do make a mistake. You can add leaves wherever you feel like there's a little bit more room to play I oh that. yeah i like that great fabulous now i'm going to add more berries do you <laughs> so business with the berries i just love little red berry dots i don't know why i no, i know why because they add just like a pop of color and they fill in space without taking away from other things you know oh yes I'm so excited about this. Okay. You inspired me to add leaves elsewhere. To yeah, girl. Oh, I like that you did it at the end of your Y. Yeah, and I did it on the end of the world. I went a little crazy, but. I liked it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now we're going to do the top of the ornaments. We're just going to add some water to our black. That turns it into a gray. Just fill those, just fill those little guys in. That's all it is. Just an even wash with gray. Genius. Five stars. <laughs> Out of how many? Five? Yeah. Yes. I 
I love the idea of putting someone's name here because you could totally make a Christmas card and do this yeah. ornament on the top and then put their name on it or something. We'll love see what it. people come up with on our Facebook group. Horace. Horace. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great name. Carl. Carl. Stanley. Ooh. So does this need to have a little bit of, do you ever add excess to these ends? Not excess. Oh, like an extra shading? Yeah. Yeah, if you want to make them feel a little bit more rounded, like how we did on the shading on this top, it's the same thing where you just kind of go on the edges and just add like a little bit of a darker value. So you see, if you look at the difference between this one and this one, this one feels like it has a little bit more form mm -hmm. and that's just because we did that shadow. And this one is just a flat wash. So I, it, this is maybe a little bit more illustrative anyway, so don't feel like you have to add those shadows of dimension, but you absolutely can. And the very last step is just outlining our balls. So, I knew it. <laughs> Al knew it the whole time. So I'm going to use that same like minty color that I use for the stripes, but you can use whatever color you want. Um, the only thing I would suggest is maybe you don't want to do like a strong like black or red. We don't want like a super powerful color because then it's going to, it would just be like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't think it would look as good. Yeah, so do, <laughs> so be like a, do a softer, lighter value color because then it won't take away from what's going on in the middle so it'll, that's why. it'll look more cartoony too yeah like yeah it, it will flatten it a bit and i'm actually turning my paper as i go Sorry, we're quiet because I'm this is like it's like lettering again. It's like that thin thin line. Concentrating. Ta-da! You guys, we did it. We finished this project. It's the first one where it was really heavy in lettering. And I feel really good about it. And you did so great. Thank you. And I really hope that you guys feel encouraged to try it out. This doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, we all have our own mark. We all have our own way of writing. And this is supposed to be fun. So hopefully little tips that we went over will help you guys experiment and keep trying. I honestly, I was really intimidated, but I had so much fun. And they look Good. different, but I really yeah. appreciate the differences. And that's what we have to remember is we appreciate our differences and not compare them to make ourselves feel worse. Don't compare. Don't compare. Another life lesson. We didn't take the oath before this, but it's always in our hearts, right? <laughs> Um, so I can't wait to see how you guys paint this. I want to see your version. I want to see what yours looks like. So if you put it on Instagram, tag us in it. Our, hash, our Instagram name is Let's Go Make Art. So we can see it. Our Facebook name is the same. So you can tag us on Facebook. Or if you want to be part of our Facebook group, it's called Let's Make Art Together. It's a really supportive community. So it's nice. really good if you're feeling intimidated. They really cheer you up and um, kind of they're there cheering you on. So you guys got this. Um, I'm really excited. Thank you so much for painting with us. That's it. Have fun. Bye. Bye.